As I said at the beginning of Mass this morning, we return to ordinary time in the calendar of the church. You know, we're through the, the holidays, the Easter holidays, so to speak, the solemnities that we've had the last few weeks. Ordinary time, we're returning. But do we? Should we return to things as usual? I think not. Yes, our state, when it comes to the repercussions of the pandemic, is in phase two or phase three here in the state. Yet, restrictions apply. Restrictions that we need to continue to follow. Wear a mask. Social distancing. Wash your hands. Put very bluntly, the coronavirus, the pandemic, is not over we still need to take precautions to lessen, at the very least, the effect of the coronavirus on ourselves, on our loved ones, upon anyone and everyone. Pope Francis, a week or so ago, in his general audience, there he was standing at St. Peter's, and there wasn't the big crowds like they usually have. But there were some people in the square. And the Pope said, don't celebrate victory over coronavirus too soon. Everyone, this is the Pope, everyone needs to obey social distancing, wearing a mask, washing your hands. And now in our state, and in particularly in our diocese, our churches will gradually reopen with 25% capacity. But there are other guidelines that we have to follow. It's just like, it isn't like, well, let's open the doors, come on, 25% of you. No. What are the guidelines? What are the things that we're mandated as a church, to do. And I want to talk a little bit about that today. Because when we come back, it isn't going to be like it was three or four months ago. It's going to be different. 25% means in this church, we'll be able to seat, give or take, 125 people. Now, if you're a family, you can sit together. But if you're not related, you're not in the same household, then there has to be six feet or so between you and those people. We only see people every other pew. When you want to come to church, this sounds awful to say, but it's the way it is. You're going to have to sign up. You're going to have to go online and sign up. And we'll get some information to you. You probably already have it because it was mailed out Wednesday or Thursday. You should have it. You'll have it certainly in time for next weekend. How do I do that, Father? How do I do that? The doors of the church will not be opened the whole morning like they are now. They'll be opened 30 minutes before Mass starts. We also ask people to be early to be early. To be early. <laughs> to be early. I, wa I want Saratoga County to hear that. To be early. Not 10 minutes late early. No, no. 10 minutes early early. Because we have to keep, we have to, for the sake of contact tracing, know who's here. We need to know the names, at least the name of the family that's coming. Just what they're asking us to do. Just in case someone is 
confirmed with the virus, then people have to be contacted. By the way, there's only one way in when you come to Mass. One way in. Nobody should let you in any of the other four or five entrances of the church. You come in the main door, the main entrance. And then when you get there, there'll be some people to greet you. There's some hand sanitizer if you need it. We'll check you off the list. If like you forgot and there's room, we'll take your name. But then you can't just walk in and sit down in your favorite seat. No more, at least not for a while. You'll be directed or escorted to a place in church. Again, that feeds, uh, helps with the seating, especially the social distancing. When you come in, we will be taking your temperature. If it's 100 or more, we're going to say, thanks for coming, nice try, but Jesus wants you home. Which goes to say, if you feel sick, stay home. Stay home. When we're in church, things will be a little different. There'll be no music books. You know, um, there'll be no, uh, the procession will be a little different, the entrance procession a little different. There'll be no servers, just the priest, maybe the deacon. We'll come in, and you may have seen this today, we'll walk in wearing a mask. Oh, by the way, you all have to wear a mask too. The entire mass. The entire mass. Priests get an exception to this because we're far enough away. The only time we're sort of asked to wear a mask, sometimes to wear it coming and going into church, but we too will wear a mask at communion time. There'll be no collection, as it normally is in church. Doesn't mean we're not collecting money. You know we are. You know, and many of you are sending it in already. You're emailing it, or, or not emailing it, you're <clears throat> uh, e-giving e it. You may be mailing it in. You can continue to do that. But at all the doors, we'll have these little plastic boxes where you can put your donation, your weekly donation in there. If you're here, if you're here, you may not be here. That's okay too. We're gonna send out a video. We did send out a video a couple days ago. Not about this particularly, but about a few things. Watch that video, watch that video. Now when we do start masses, and Father, when are you starting masses? We're going to restart the last weekend, so a week from today, uh, public masses. There'll be only two, there'll only be two masses on the weekend. There's going to be a vigil mass Saturday at 4.30, and then one mass on Sunday at 10.30 which will continue and always has been for three years, will continue for many more years to be live streamed every week. And speaking of two masses, another guideline we have to adhere to is after every mass, the church must be cleaned, cleaned. Take some time to do that. I would just say as an aside, and, and I'll show you, you'll get an imp in, in inference as to why I'm doing this in a second. But um, as far as daily mass goes here at St. Mary's Church, daily mass will continue to be suspended at least until the middle, the beginning, the middle of September. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, why that is. But what I think about is most important about the reopening and the possibility of people coming to back to church, we need to ensure your 
well-being, and safety. And you should be as conscious. Bishop Scharfenberger said this upon the reopening of churches. He said, all Catholics continue to be dispensed from the obligation to attend Sunday Mass until further notice. So that those who are vulnerable, who's vulnerable? Me, you, many of you. You're 60, 65 or older, you're vulnerable. You're sick, you're vulnerable. And on the list goes. For those who are vulnerable or, or simply feel uncomfortable attending a public liturgy, they are encouraged to remain home and, if possible, to view Mass via live streaming, which will continue at this parish and many others. Another bishop, the Bishop of Palm Beach, Florida, he said this. I love the way he said it. I emphasize that all Catholics are dispensed from the obligation to attend Mass until further notice. This is meant to ensure the well-being and the safety of all, not only the elderly and those who are at risk for illness, but anyone, anyone of any age who is making a prudent decision about their own well-being as well as others. Simply stated, as we begin and continue the process of reopening, no one, no one is obliged or should feel obliged to come to church. This is an individual and free decision. And one may have an overriding, serious obligation not, not to come to church. I like what they say. One of my brother priests was talking about this last week in his homily. And he talked about a priest someplace in our country, I think it was Texas, who went after the bishops about the fact that they were dispensing people and said churches are closed for the last several months. And he went after them, berated them. And this priest got up on the pulpit and he said, I wanted to slap that priest in the face. And he's right. It's right. I, 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 if Jesus was here, what would Jesus say? He'd say, folks, I said this a week or two ago in the homily. Do unto others. Love, love God, love others, love your neighbor. This is what it's about. The pandemic is not gone. We need to be careful, not paranoid, but careful. And as our bishop has said, if you're going to err, err on the side of caution. Caution. Yes, I know the Eucharist is important. But so is the body and blood of Christ. You, me, us. And it seems to me that being away, you know, we're away from people a lot. You know, our loved ones. Sometimes we don't see our loved ones. It doesn't mean we don't love them. They don't love us. It just means for a time we're away. That will change. So with the Eucharist, our God is with us in many, many ways. You know, we hear that in the responsorial psalm today. Lord, in your great love, answer us. And he does. He does. He does. <clears throat> and so, live streaming continues next week. Personally, I'll be there too. I'll be sitting in my living room, just like you're sitting in your living room next week. 
I don't know if I have a cup of coffee in my hand. I don't know if I have my PJs on. But I'll be watching Mass too with my computer, praying with you, the people of God. Uh, Father, did I hear you correct? You're not going to be doing Mass next week? I said, that's right. That's right, you heard that. Father Vasco, who is a priest friend of mine, a former director of liturgy for the diocese, priest architect, who happens to live in the area, uh, will be the presider at the two masses next weekend. But the uh, overriding reason why I'm not going to be here is that on Tuesday, June 23rd, as you've probably read in the letter that I sent to you, if you didn't, you can go back to it, I'm going to have major surgery. That's going to take me out of action for more than five days. We're talking weeks, okay? So uh, I, I share that because you need to know. Uh, I'm sure there'll be many um, guesses. On why is he in the hospital? <laughs> why is it waiting to the winter to do this? It is golf season. I'll tell, I'll tell you sort of a funny story. I, uh, I've been having some problems, and so and it became a little obvious the three or four times that I played golf early in the season. So about three weeks ago, I called uh, an orthopedic doctor friend of mine. He didn't answer his cell phone, but about three hours later, he called me back. And he said to me, uh, Father Joe, I'm sorry that I didn't get you at the time. He says, we were out playing golf. I said to him, John's his first name. I said, hey, John, uh, the reason I called you is I can't play golf. And we, we talked over the phone what my problem was. And uh, we got into the uh, uh, office the next morning, 8 o'clock. Don't you wish you'd get an appointment that quick? And uh, he took an x-ray. And then a little bit later, we, we took an MRI. And he says, you need surgery. And uh, we went downstairs to uh, another level of the uh, uh, facility that he runs. And uh, in walks this doctor, who we're going to see, but he walked in unexpectedly. And John says to him, hey, and the priest knew me. He goes, hi, Father Joe. He says, you've got to operate on Father Joe. He needs to play golf. So not this year, but next year. So it does revolve around golf at, at the same time. But it's, it's pretty serious uh, Thing. So I, I'm going to ask for you all for two prayers, okay? The first prayer I'm asking for is a prayer for um, the health care, the health hospital team, the surgical team. Yeah? Pray for them. You know, not, not just that they might, <laughs> won't make any mistakes with Father Joe, but pray for them in, in the work that they do that day and every day, huh? Well, we, these are people that do a lot of good, and we probably don't think about them too often unless we're involved. And then the, the second prayer I'm going to ask you for is to join me in a prayer. And the prayer is a selfish prayer that I want you to pray for me and with me. It's a prayer that I, Father Joe, will be a good and patient patient. Miracles can happen, okay? Not just in the next few days, but in the next few weeks and months. Huh? Okay. And I should make this confession uh, ahead of time. My record of making my bed every day is about to come to an end. My recovery, at least in the beginning, will not allow me to make a bed. In several months, when I get better, I'll be back to making a bed. But just because I'm not making my bed doesn't mean you can't make yours. Huh? Okay. So folks, uh, let's be safe. Let's be smart. Let's be patient, even about coming to church. Let's continue to wear a mask, observe social, social distancing, wash our hands. The pandemic is still with us. God is still with us. Let us be at peace. Let us be smart. Let us pray.